If you haven't seen last week's video already, I did a repetitive print that was just one stencil laid out in a particular way to make exactly the fabric that I wanted. And now I'm going to show you how I did the border print that was at the bottom of it. And yes, technically I'm airing these videos out of order that I did it in, but it's fine. Now I'm going to let you know up front this was a very time consuming process and this video is a little bit longer and less polished than the previous one. Um, I am going to be doing more border prints in the future, and I'm probably going to be doing a printable in the future as well, probably the gate pattern that you're about to see. So if you like anything in particular about this print, feel free to let me know in the comments below, and I will explore that a little bit more in the future. Oh, one other thing I want to mention before getting into it. This fabric is being printed specifically for use for um, a Lolita JSK. So I know in my head exactly what I'm going to be doing with the fabric and exactly how I want it to look on the finished garment. Also, if you are in the Lolita sewing community, you know how hard it is to find border prints that look how you want. So hopefully this gives you a little bit more freedom when it comes to sewing your own clothes. I think that your personal style should be as personal as it possibly can be, and hopefully this lets you tweak things to exactly how you want them. Anyway, that's enough from me. Let's get on to the tutorial. So to start with, I thought I would explain the basics of designing a stencil. So your negative space has to all be connected because it's going to be cut out. And any little details of negative space that you cut out in the center of the stencil are just going to disappear when you cut out the large thing. So that's basically why these windows here are open on the bottom. If they weren't open on the bottom, they would totally disappear. There's a lot of ways to work around this, for example, having a two-step stencil, like this gate one. I have the horizontal lines being drawn here, and the vertical lines are underneath. I can see through my paper, as you can kind of see in the video, and this gives me a guideline of where to put all of my horizontal lines and all of my decorations, like my cute little spikes at the top of my gate. These two stencils are going to work in tandem to give me one complete gate that looks exactly the way that I want it to look. If you want a stencil that is larger than standard printer paper, you can just tape two pieces together. I recommend doing this on the back side of your paper so that your tape doesn't interfere with your sketch. For my larger gate, I'm using my small gate as a guide. This way, all of my horizontal lines will line up with each other and look aesthetic. Oh, speaking of being able to see uh, what you have underneath, I thought I would just mention it might seem like a good idea to do this out of tracing paper, but I've found that the tracing paper is way too flimsy and thin, so it doesn't hold up as well as printer paper. And speaking of wanting a stencil that will last, we're going to cover the front side of our stencil with clear packing tape. I've found that the duct tape brand clear packing tape is a lot higher quality than any of the other ones that I've used, and it doesn't get stuck to itself and then you have to spend, like, five minutes trying to start it again. It's really time saving and it makes this whole process a lot more fun. For your smaller sketches, go ahead and cut those apart. And then as long as you have a table that the tape comes off of easily, like my glass top table here, go ahead and place your tape over top of the sketch. This creates a really wide margin and when you peel it up, you can fold the tape over onto itself or place fresh tape over the fresh tape so it's not sticky, whichever works best for you. When it comes time to cut out your design, you're going to want to use either a pen knife or an X-Acto knife. I have done this with a box cutter, but it is a lot easier to use a precision tool. Cut out your design the same way that you would add line art. Ignore all of the sketchy lines and just do crisp, clean ones. If you're not very experienced with doing line art, I would go ahead and do pen lines over your sketch lines and then follow those with your X-Acto knife. Using an X-Acto knife is a learned skill, so if it's not something you've done before, you might want to practice on a couple of sketches that you haven't spent all of the time taping first. But just so long as you go carefully and slowly, you should be fine. And if you do happen to make a mistake like cutting too far or cutting a sixth finger in, 
you can use clear plastic tape on the back and front side to cover up your mistake. That way the paint These won't go stencils through here. and My your next stencil step, will be now saved. that they're all carved out, including the one for the other video, <laughs> that's going to be a pain, <laughs> but now that they're all carved out, my plan is to organize them by color. So Skelly Boy here, he's going to be white and these gates are going to be black and well not black these are going to be like a burnished silver um i'm going to be mixing these all from my speedball paints i have the primary colors as well as black and white and i believe that i have black and white in um pearlescent and non-pearlescent and i'm going to be using that to my advantage a little bit so yeah i think the order i'm going to go is going to be all of my dark shadows and then my gate, then my spider webs and my skeleton, 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 <laughs> um, and then all of the other little details from there, like uh, the pumpkins and all of that. Uh, my hope for today is to get my fabric ironed, to get all of the dark shadows done, and to get the gates done. And I feel like that is a reasonable, a reasonable goalpost. <laughs> So I took all of my largest non-repeating stencils and I lined them up basically where I would want them to be in my final print and I measured the length of okay. this and placed a piece of washing tape So I've tape got my paint here. Where my design it is be. black and it's my non-pearlescent black and I've rigged up this doodad. This is just a, a makeup sponge and this is a hair clip. Um, a clothespin would work just as fine. This is just so that I'm not using my fingers, because your fingers get dirty, and then if you touch something, that's dirty. So I think this will be a lot cleaner, and I won't get any, like, smudgies. My cat is going absolutely ballistic today, so hopefully she leaves my fabric alone. Oh, very important, I almost forgot, I'm using this plastic lid as a paint palette, so that I can have enough space to stampy stamp on it and not like totally load my sponge. What did I tell you already? Off. Shoo. Shoo. No. Go away. So basically I'm going to be leaving this much at the bottom where absolutely no paint will go. This is for my hem. Yes, yeah, so there's going to be like this big chunk at the bottom where nothing will go. And then I'm going to do all of my shadows, which I have here. And this one is very special because I'm only going to do this tree every two times. I was going to carve out a second stencil for this, but I gave up on that. I recommend using a ruler to make sure that you're lining your stencils up the same distance from the bottom every time. Also, if anything were to move your fabric out from under you, make sure that you very carefully line your stencil back up. <laughs> if you have a very curly stencil like this tree is for me, make sure that whenever you stamp down your little sponge, you are stamping it on top of all details of your stencil and not accidentally going underneath of it. Repeating stencils like the tombstones are much easier to do in my opinion, because you just need to line them up based off of the previous one and you can go in a straight line and not really think about it too much. It's very satisfying. Speaking of satisfying... I like the way that this silver turned out. I was able to just use my leftover black and mix in a little bit of pearlescent white, and it turned out perfectly. Now to change the color that's on my sponge, I've just really submerged it in this silver paint, dabbed a little off, really ground it in there, and then I've gone over here, and I've squished it like this really hard. I'm trying to force any black paint that's in there out and really get the silver paint in so that I don't wind up with any awkward blotches. I'm gonna call that good enough. To do the gates, I'm gonna do one complete pass with just the vertical lines, and then I'm gonna go back over with my horizontal lines afterwards. I trimmed the margin of my small gate so that I could line it up with the edge of the right-hand side and the second most bar, and they would be evenly spaced the way that I want them. For the second pass of your stencil, the most important thing is making sure that everything is lined up correctly. The tops of the arrows and the vertical bars should line up perfectly. 
or at least close to perfectly. Day two. <laughs> this has turned out to be just as intense of a process as I was expecting it to be. I think that the black layer took me three, maybe two hours to do, and the silver layer definitely took like a solid hour and a half to two hours. Um, I am printing the full four yards of fabric, even though I don't know that I'm going to use the full four yards of fabric in the skirt. Um, I did want to say now during this process that um, with Lolita uh, fabric requirements, I've noticed that usually like one edge, roughly like I'm going to say 33 inches is enough to give you a hem, your seam allowance, and the full skirt. So this entire bottom portion, like 34 inches of that, is going to be my skirt and I'm going to gather that in. And then that leaves this top edge. <laughs> um, and when I made my green tea dress, I don't know why I'm pointing, it's not over there. When I made my green tea dress, I got, I want to say it was five, maybe six yards of fabric, and I still have like two yards left over. And it's mostly um, that top portion. So I am pretty sure that I'm gonna have a bodice aligning in the same fabric and all the fabric I could possibly want for accessories. <laughs> I'm gonna have to take you to see a close up of this border. I'm like half afraid to do more layers over it because it's so pretty right now. I think that I will have to do this a second time and make one that I just leave as is because this is stunning. However, I do like my skeleton boys. My plan is to do this step of the spider webs first, and I'm doing this in thirds. So like I do one section in its entirety, and then I do the second section of that layer in its entirety, and then I move it and I do the next one. Um, and I'm only filming the first go. <laughs> because otherwise I would just have so much footage. Um, so I'm planning out where these are going to go and just making sure that they're evenly distributed and I'll check back with you when I've got paint in my hands. With a fresh sponge, I was ready to go into it. So like I said, I'm doing the first pass of all of the spiderweb stencils as well as my skeletons. And then I'm going in with the second pass of the webs before transitioning further. Here is an example of what I'm doing with the spider webs a little bit closer up. One thing to keep in mind as you're stamping is that you don't want to over flood your image because then you wind up with those little blobbies like you just saw on that spider web. This is a pretty good close up shot where you can see me adjusting my spider web and you can see that I'm looking at the web underneath. This is why I actually prefer this method to multiple stamps, because with stamps you can't see what's going on underneath and you don't know exactly where your lines are going, but with this method it's a little bit more precise. As we see, adding layers to our previous design just makes it a little bit more kitschy and fun, but I would be lying if I said I was not in love with that skeleton. So I have my oranges mixed up, it's just um, this yellow by plaid and some red, which is the non-pearlescent red. I have citron, but I didn't want to use this yellow because, I don't know if you can see it, but it has a little bit of pearlescent powder to it, and I thought that would make my pumpkins look kind of cheesy. Also, this orange color, I'm planning on adding more black to it and turning it into a brown when I do my spiders and my little heart string. Um, so this is my base orange here, and this one's a little bit darker. I accidentally added too much black, so I like siphoned it over to the side. <laughs> and I'm going to need a, a dark orange in a minute anyway, so that worked out for the best. Also, um, this is a glass top table, so I'll be able to claim this off really easily. So, please don't worry for me. There are two important things that I learned during the printing of the pumpkins. First off is that fabric paint does not dry as quickly and as smoothly as screen printing paint, so that gave me a much longer drying time. Secondly, it took a really long time to cover with my orange pumpkins because there was a blue background. I had to do like three coats. This, combined with the long drying time, made this stage take forever. 
But once I finally put my shadows on my pumpkin and it started looking exactly as I'd pictured it in my head, it was all worth it. I was a little bit impatient and I put my green stems on too soon. And when I pulled my stencil back up, it took a little bit of the paint with it. Thankfully, I was able to put some more orange over top and fix this. Starting the outro. What was I gonna say? What was I gonna say? Now see, that wasn't so hard. Just really, really time consuming. <laughs> Whew. If you do this for yourself, I would love to see your final results and you can feel free to tag me on Instagram at MayaGraceSews or you can email me at MayaGraceSews at gmail.com. Whichever floats your goats. Anyways, that's all I got. I'll see you in the next one. Bye! I just realized I've been watching so many of Sweetie Sprout's videos that I've started doing my bye in like the same tone as her. Like I go, bye, like she does now. And it is exclusively because every time she uploads, I am like the first one there. Yeah, Sweetie Sprout's awesome. You should, you should check her out. Kate Calamity is awesome too. Oh. Very awesome. There's a lot of really awesome people on YouTube. Oh, what was I gonna say? And I'm all about the freedom, honey. That was weird. That was a weird thing to say. So you can hashtag me at myagracesews.com. What? That made no sense. I'm not an old lady, I swear. I have a middle part. See? I'm not old. <sighs> it's gonna be a good week.